so let's talk. We were talking over the last hour, and a lot of this you know, I never heard before, but I do want you to share um, with everybody. You had, you know, you made, you know, in a family business, you uh, made some bad choices. In the, I did. In, in, uh, in the, what, the middle of the 19... I was in a family 1990s. business. Actually, the same family business that I ran away from to that first network marketing company. Yeah, we was in a family business. And, and why don't you just kind of explain what happened and, and the end result? Well, I it's left that family business. Pretty dramatic. I left that family business. Um, I was still in, it in that first company mm -hmm. and actually went back to it after that. Mm -hmm. And for a variety of reasons, we sold that business. But shortly after, thereafter, that business, along with a lot of other businesses that were in similar um, enterprise, uh, came under investigation of the federal government. It was a family-owned business. And in 1994, maybe 95, I was actually indicted, along with my mother. And before, you know, everybody's probably questioning what it was for. And what it was for really isn't that important. Suffice to say, it had nothing to do with network marketing, so nobody out there needs to worry about that. And I was there, and nobody held a gun to my head. I certainly made bad choices. I don't think I was involved in some great big enterprise or criminal conspiracy, but... I certainly was there and I make no excuses for that. But went through a long process with the government and there comes a point in time, Eric, when it's the federal government, the United States government versus you, it really doesn't come down to are you going to fight or can I win or lose. It comes down to making the best deal that you can live with. And there came a point in time when my husband was indicted and all these things transpired that I made a choice that was the best decision that I could make for my family. And that choice was that I elected to make arrive at an arrangement with the government where I could go away to a club fed for a year and leave my husband home with my children. My mother, who was not getting any younger, you know, could pay a huge fine, but she could stay out of that circumstance. And I could go do that, do, do that time for a year and come out and have my life back. And after evaluating it, that seemed to be the only decision to make because... Had I fought and won, which, by the way, was unlikely because the government tends to win 98% of the cases, and that's the government, the, the downside was a potential loss of going there for something like seven years. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. seven years versus one, no brainer. Okay, so... so. And I, did, I left in May of 97. It was a nice prison, but you went to prison for a oh, year. Oh, yeah. Federal, federal, federal prison camp, club fed. I did. Um, so... Uh, and I can tell you today, a decade later, best thing that ever happened to me. No, I want to hear about that because... Traumatic experience. Um, you, you know, say goodbye to your family. I do. And you, um, off you know, I go. Off you go. And and, and that's what, what was what what t you know, what happened during that twelve months well, and what did it do? Well, first of all, it's very much like our industry. All the lessons that we try to teach in our industry all make <laughs> sense to me. Prison is very much like no, our industry. I mean, no, I see how it is. It's the personal it's development. First you join, and then they put the handcuffs on, and then they say you can't go across the line, otherwise you'll be shot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain. Okay. I will. Okay. Um, well, no, seriously, it's all the lessons that we teach. First off, we all like to think that we're the center of the universe. Right. And the hardest lesson I learned when I first got there is you're going to be finding this very shocking, but would you believe that life goes on? Yeah. That the world around you, it's like, what's going to happen to everybody while I'm gone? And oh my God, the sun rises, people go, your ch people go to school, and it does go on without you. So that's a humbling experience. When you get into prison, it's the great equalizer. It doesn't matter where you came from. You know, I obviously, I was very lucky, and I started to realize how lucky I was. I had a family. I didn't lose my home. I paid a minimal fine, but I didn't lose my cars. I didn't lose most, you know, some people, they lose everything mm. and they have nothing. Mm. But you get in there and everybody has the same clothes. Everybody starts the same on day one. Everybody gets a job. Everybody has a shoe. Everybody has the same things. Does that sound a lot like our industry? Everybody starts at the bottom, right? Doesn't matter what you did yesterday. You could be a truck driver. You could be a CEO, but everybody gets to start here and work their way to the top. That's what I mean. Right. So I get in there and for three months... I was uh, wallowing in self-pity. As a matter of fact, I took it to an art form. Mm -hmm. And some people, so you take all these people, you put them in the exact same situation, there were people that were productive, positive, making the best of it, walking the track, doing great things, making it happen every day. And there were people that were whining, crying, miserable, everything. Right. There were people that had a lot of time, but you'd never know it because mm -hmm. they were helping everybody 
making everybody's day better just by being a part of it. There were people that were energy vampires. They would enter a room and they would drain it. Does this remind you of anything you know? Does this sound familiar? I found that I was a lot more of a whiner and miserable for the first three months than I was, you know, like the people that I respected. Yeah. And that bothered me when I realized it. So I said, this isn't me. So one day I was walking around the track and I met a really wonderful girl. Her name was Kim. I'll leave last names out of it to protect the privacy of those who don't uh, like sure, to talk sure, about sure. their life story. And I asked her, how is it that you do this? You have such a great attitude. I just don't get it. And she said to me, you know, how much time do you have left? I said, nine months. She said, you know, in nine months, you're going to have a choice to make. Because it's going to, you have a choice to make about the next nine months. Because nine months is going to come whether you're, whatever happens. She said, nine months from now, do you want to look back on this experience and look back on yourself and say, I whined, I cried, I was miserable, I accomplished absolutely nothing? Or do you want to look back and say, I had an experience, I did everything I could, I helped people, I made the most of it, I did positive things with my life. That made sense to me. So over the next nine months, I really changed my attitude from that day forward. I said, you know what, I've never run five miles. I think I'd like to do that. By the way, folks, I never run around the block. Right. So... I also learned you can't run five miles the first day. You'll pass out and you don't croak. I remember walking the track, running a quarter of a mile, running one length of a mile, running the first mile, running the second mile, trying to run three too quickly. That's what I mean by it's like the industry. You don't run five miles. It took me eight months to work up to running three and a half, and I never made five mm -hmm. because the weather changed. But here's the thing. If I hadn't started... I never would have run three and a half. Mm -hmm. And that's also like our industry. You don't have to be good to start, but you have to start if you ever want to be any good. And if you want to be a good professional, be really prepared to be a really bad amateur because that's how you get good. You do everything wrong till you do everything mediocre, till you do everything good, till you do everything really well. Want to do a good meeting? Do 50 really bad meetings. You'll do a good one. So, um... Went back to what I knew. Network marketing had taught me a lot about personal development. I started teaching it. I taught a literacy meeting. I taught. I started a literacy program, getting inmates to teach other inmates how to teach them how, each other how to read. It made me feel really good. It helped other people. Did a lot of it reading. spread. Oh, if I, you know, we spend our lives saying, if I had time, I'd do this. If I had time, I'd do that. So I always said, if I had time, I would read X. And I read it all. I started on the. I was going to read a book a day. Some days I read two. I read the Bhagavad Gita. I read everything Siddhartha wrote. I read Buddha's great works. I read the Book of Mormon. I read the Book of Abraham. I read the Pearl of Great Price. I read the Bible 16 times, five different translations. Some were more interesting than others. And it was just really a fascinating time. I journaled, which I had never done. Mm. So so um, you turned it around. Right? So, so you, yeah. you, you, uh, you found yourself. In this process. You know, it's funny. It's exactly it. I found myself for the first time probably in my life in that process. Hmm. So now you're getting ready to be released. Yes, and I'm excited. And they have this little, you know, exit class. Oh. So, so Good talk intentions. About, so talk about that. Okay, and I, I equate this back. You know, Eric um, did a tape years ago that I to this day listen, and it's called. She, she told you. You told me you had this, I, and I got to get a copy because I, I don't even remember it. He recorded a tape called "The Day That You Turn Your Life Around," and it talks about when everything starts to click because you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, and everything clicks and, you, and it turns around for you. That happened for me in that experience. But he also talks about the laws of association when you get around the wrong thinking and negative thinking, how it can bring you down. Well, this day, they send you to this group, presumably to help you get in the right frame of mind to go home. I was in a great frame of mind when I walked into this meeting to sit down, all these girls, also in a pretty good frame of mind, and in walk these do-gooders. I'm sure their intentions were wonderful. And they started asking me questions like, hey, have you ever thought about the fact that it's possible when you go home, nobody will ever speak to you? That you won't get a job? That you'll live under a bus, under a dock somewhere? or under a viaduct in a box, or that your family will never speak to you, or that your kids won't want to know you. Or you can't get a job, or you can't. Oh, you ever, by the time I, and I was like, no, I've never considered that. By the time I left this meeting, I was a basket case. Now, in this um, process of being there for a year, there was an army chaplain, and she was tough as nails, but she was perfect, tough love kind of person 
for this type of a situation because she was blunt and she called it the way she saw it and I really enjoyed her. By the time I went through 24 hours the next morning after having all this ruminate for the evening, I didn't sleep. The next morning, I was a basket case. I was hysterical, so I went to see her, and by the time she came in, I had been waiting. I was, like, shaking. And shaking, she's like, Grossman, what's the matter with you? I'm like, oh, I'm going to be living under a box and a viaduct, and no one's going to talk to me, and I'll never have a job. She's like, what the heck has happened to you? And she said to me, you know, I don't like to solve other people's problems for them. And she goes, of course I can, but I, I find it doesn't stick. But I'm in a hurry. I have no time for this. Come in here, I'm going to solve your life for you, and then you're going to go away and never bother me again. And she brought me in and she said, you know, Grossman, you're, you're, you're a business mind. So I'm going to put this in business terms for you to make it simple so you'll go away and leave me alone. She said, sit down right here and listen very carefully. She said, you've always run your life like it's a sole proprietorship, and I have news for you, it isn't. She said, it's a partnership, and this is going to really upset you because you're not the senior partner, although you like to think you are. She said, you're the junior partner. She said, you know what happens in business when the partners get their roles mixed up? The business goes to hell in a handbasket. She said, so I'm going to tell you what the jobs are. You are the junior partner, and every day you have one job. You get up, you shower up, you shine up, you suit up, and you show up with a smile on your face and a belief that if you do what you're supposed to do with integrity and a belief in your heart that everything's going to work out, your senior partner will take care of everything else. Do that, and I promise you, in three years, you will have built yourself an empire, everything will take care of itself, and you'll have more success than you ever dreamed possible. And it sounded a little bit fluffy to me. So, and, and but the senior partner being? Oh, yeah, your senior partner will take care of everything else. Obviously, your higher power, whichever one you subscribe to, listening, viewing audience. It sounded, you know, I've always believed in the higher power, but the solution sounded a little bit fluffy. But I'm like, I was so such a basket case, I'm like, okay, why not? And pretty much I, when I got home, that's uh, how I chose to live my life. Now, here, here's a, an interesting lesson because I, I love that story. And some, sometimes a person shows up in your life for a particular reason. Always, and, I think. And uh, you have this little defining moment where you could go, you know, you could have gone home and said, I can't build a business because no one will listen to me. I can't build a business because I've been in jail. I can't, you know, I can't build a business. I don't have any credibility. And, you know, how do you expect me to do anything when I have my self-esteem problems that maybe I have or all this other kind of stuff? You could have done that. And you know what? A lot of people watching this program, they've been wallowing in the same thing. They've been sitting there saying, how do you expect me to succeed with my circumstances? How do you expect me to succeed based upon my life experience? And what I like about the life lesson that was learned, and maybe that's the whole reason why you went, is to be able to kind of repurpose and redefine your life and be back in a situation where you, there were, it was hopeful. Because, I mean, if everybody that, that um, uh, is watching this followed the same advice, which is what? Every day you what? Get up, yep. shower up, shine up, suit up, and show up with a smile on your face and a and act with integrity and a belief that if you do what you're supposed to, it will all work out. And you know what, Eric? It did, and it does. Yeah. So a good lesson for everybody um, watching is is to do the same. Um, go out there and and release the limiting beliefs of everything else and all the the, the inner talk that maybe will talk you out of your success and your future. Well, here's something interesting that you said. The word, the to me the. I don't know what the right term for this is, but I think the biggest misnomer of all is the word credibility. I think credibility is a word people use to, as an excuse to not do things. I hate the word. Credibility is a crock. <laughs> okay, because credit, what is credibility? I found that being straight with people and doing what you say you're gonna do is all the credibility you ever need to get anybody to follow you anywhere. Mm -hmm. If you do what you say you're gonna do, people will listen. When I build a business, I don't like people to tell me they're going to set the world on fire and they get excited for three weeks and then you never see them again. I would rather have the guy who says, Lisa, I'm going to give you five hours a week. If that's all, and he gives me five hours a week consistently and shows up for a year for five hours a week, I'll show you a guy who will be there year three and will be full time making a fortune. Mm -hmm. Do what you say you're going to do and people will follow you. Right. You ever notice that? Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things when I train is my favorite story. 
that's all people want because most people don't see what they do what they say they're going to do. You have kids, right? Yep. Your kids play sports? Uh, yep. All right. My, kid, my daughter plays soccer. And think about, you know, everybody says they love Joe. Joe's a soccer coach. If Joe called you and said, we're having a special practice, 9 a.m., Tuesday morning, have your son there, and you showed up, everybody shows up, all the parents are there, no Joe. Joe doesn't call. You may love Joe. What are the chances you're ever going to let Joe coach your kid again? Right. None. But if, but if people do what they say they're going to do, that's all you're going to do. Just do what you say you're going to do. Hmm. I learned with people when I got out, I told everybody my past. And it helped me. People figured if I was honest about that, what was I going to lie about? People want to help you. They like to help other people. Nobody it makes likes a comeback good. story. They like a redemption story. And you know what? Nobody hasn't made a mistake. Yeah. I've never met a successful person that hasn't made a mistake. I've never met a successful person that hasn't had a failure. Mm. The only people that haven't had failure are people that have never tried, therefore they've never had success either. Right. As a new skin distributor, you never have to worry about the technology systems that keep your business running. With our innovative IT solutions and secure high-speed data technology, you can focus on your business with the confidence that every minute of every day, we are here to ensure your business operates smoothly. Imagine having to calculate sales tax, income tax, and currency conversion on every transaction, all while trying to run your worldwide business. With our global seamless compensation plan, you don't have to. Our systems do the work for you. Our systems gather all new skin transactions from around the world to ensure that every one of your transactions is included in your commissions payment. The order information arrives here at the Global Network Operations Center. The transaction information is processed here and your commission is calculated accurately, including sales tax and currency calculations. Then you receive your commissions payment on time and in your currency.